A girl falls in love with a boy who destroys her lifelong dream. She finds out the truth and gets furious. The two then find themselves in a situation where they cannot survive without the other. Let's see what happens. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2016 sci-fi romance film Passengers. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts with the Avalon, a sleeper ship transporting 5,000 colonists and 258 crew members who are in hibernation pods traveling from Earth to the planet Homestead 2. The journey is 120 years long. All of the spaceship's quarters can be seen empty and the vessel on autopilot. It has only been 30 years when the ship passes through an asteroid belt that weakens its shields. Power gets diverted to the main shield, however the ship collides with a giant asteroid and that causes various malfunctions. The ship begins self-reparations, and this is when one of the hibernation pods activates and a passenger comes out. The passenger is known as Jim Preston, who is a mechanical engineer. When he is up, an animated system gets activated and tells him that he has spent 120 years in suspended animation. It also tells him that their ship is just two months away from Homestead 2. He is then told that he can spend these four months enjoying the luxuries of this amazing ship. The animated system also instructs Jim about his ID band, his cabin, and the activity he is going to be involved in. Jim is simultaneously excited and nervous as his arrival on the planet is now close. He is excited to meet the people on the ship. The man gets ready and walks out. He goes into an automated class meant for an entire learning group. It is being explained to him that the Earth is overpopulated, overpriced, and overrated. Jim wants to ask some questions, but he is told to hold them until the end of the lecture. However, he keeps asking why he's the only one out there. Soon, he figures out that the hologram in front of him is not going to answer his questions, so he gets out of there to search for other people. Jim goes to the main concourse of the ship but finds it empty. There, he asks the automated system to put him through to a real person. He soon finds that this is not going to happen either and that no real person is there. He demands to speak to the captain. He goes to the bridge and finds out that he does not have access to go inside, however he is still able to look inside and he does, and he finds out that all the crew members are also asleep. Jim then goes to the observatory and there he finds out that the ship is actually 90 years away from Homestead 2. This is when he realizes that he is awake too early. He goes back to the concourse and sends a message back to Earth asking what he should do now that he's awake. He tells them that he does not know how to get back to hibernation. The system tells him that it is going to take him 55 years to get an answer back from Earth. Jim gets frustrated, not knowing what next to do, he goes to the ship bar. There he sees the bartender and takes a sigh of relief for seeing another person until he realizes that the bartender is an android. He wants to ask him a lot of questions, but he cannot even explain the simplest things to the man. The next day, Jim wakes up and finds out that most of the things there are reserved for the gold class passengers. He drinks his coffee and decides that he is going to try and figure out how to activate his hibernation pod again. He gets some tools and lies down inside the pod, but his efforts go in vain. Then he tries to wake up the members of the crew. That does not happen either. Jim again goes to the bar to drink and the android named Arthur gives him a piece of advice. He asks Jim to break into the gold classroom and have some fun there. He does so but ends up getting sick of everything. One time he gets drunk and goes into the room where all the hibernation pods are. There he sees a spacesuit. He wears the suit and goes into the airlock. He pushes the button and the lever to release the airlock door. When he gets out of the ship, he is fascinated by the view. Jim enjoys the spacewalk but soon realizes his loneliness and gets devastated. He comes back in, takes off his suit, and then goes back to the airlock without the suit. He decides that he's just going to end it all by killing himself. As he's about to push the lever, he changes his mind and runs back inside. There, he sees a woman in a pod whose name is Aurora. He listens to her passenger interview and he gets attracted to her. Jim gets obsessed with her, keeps watching her video, and does further research on her as well. He also discusses her with the bartender, Arthur. He is devastated about the fact that he woke up early and that this woman is now out of his reach. Jim thinks about waking her up. He discusses it with the android. Soon he realizes that if he wakes her up, he is just going to strand her with him in this place. He thinks back and forth, but is eventually sick of everything around him. He decides he's going to wake Aurora up. He goes to her pod and manages to activate it. She goes through the same process as Jim went a year ago when he woke up. Jim hides in a room as she wakes up. He then goes to the concourse, hoping to find her, and there she is, confused with a lot of questions on her mind. Jim then tells her that they are the only ones who are awake, and then takes her to the observatory. He tells her everything that he has been through since a year alone in this place. Aurora freaks out and runs back to her pod, saying that she's going to get back in there. Jim tells her that there's no way they can get back to hibernation. He tells her that both of them are stranded now. Jim tells her everything, and she feels sorry for him spending a whole year alone in this place. Jim then feels guilty and asks Arthur not to tell her the truth. 
Aurora, on the other hand, argues with the automated info desk as she asks him about the hibernation process. The two then have breakfast together, and as they are about to get out of there, the desk has some sort of malfunction. Aurora realizes that Jim has been eating the same thing for a year and gets him the gold class menu. They talk, and Jim finds out that Aurora is hell-bent on fixing the hibernation pods. She searches through the inventory, then she goes through some research documents. She gets extremely frustrated and tries to break the door of the quarters where all the crew members sleep. Jim notices that malfunctions on the ship have started to increase. Aurora, on the other hand, starts having a routine in which she writes, jogs, and swims in the pool. She then goes to the cantina and interviews Jim, thinking that he might have an interesting story to tell her. She asks him why did he choose the colony, and he tells her that he wants to become someone significant and believes that he could build something that can help him achieve his goal. After that, they walk towards the observatory, and this is when Aurora shares her reason to be there. She explains that she has a round-trip ticket. She wants to go to the homestead to live there for a year, and then come back to write the most amazing story any journalist has ever written and be the only one to have experienced that. Aurora has now given up on the hope to fix the hibernation pod. Jim, on the other hand, cheers her up, taking her dancing and playing basketball with her. He also introduces her to the bartender. She feels nice until she is reminded of their situation. Jim is left alone with the android, and he feels extremely guilty for what he's done to her. Jim builds a miniature of the Chrysler building for Aurora, and she walks in as he's working on it. She sees it, and after some time, the two go on a date to the bar. They share stories, and she tells Jim that her father died when she was just a teenager. After the dinner, Jim takes her to the airlock as he wants to share the experience he had with her, too. The two wear the spacesuits. They go out on a spacewalk together, and Jim enjoys this walk as he now has someone with whom he can share this amazing experience. The two float together in space, and the next thing, they float back into the ship and start making out. They sleep together, and then the two start living and acting like they are a couple. They eat together, exercise together, and sleep together. One day, the ship passes by a red giant, and the two rush to the observatory to see it. Then Aurora's birthday arrives, the couple has dinner at a restaurant on the ship, then the two go to the bar. Jim is to the bathroom as he looks at the ring he has for Aurora, intending to propose to her. The bartender, on the other hand, tells Aurora the truth about her being awake. She confronts him and gets out of there, being absolutely furious. Jim goes to the cabin and finds that all her stuff is gone. He then finds her in the cantina, but upon seeing him there, she runs away. Aurora is more pissed off than hurt. She does not know what to do. One night, she goes to Jim's cabin and attacks him. She punches and kicks him while he's in bed. She just wants to kill him. She keeps avoiding him. On the other hand, he tries to explain to her that he did it because he fell in love with her. Aurora tells him that she does not care and says that she will never forgive him. One day, another malfunction happens and the main command on the ship gets shut down due to an error. Jim then keeps on experiencing malfunctions. Aurora, on the other hand, goes to the concourse and sees that Jim has planted a tree there. She goes to the cantina and finds out that the food machine is also not working. After that, the two hear the voice of the desk chief. He asks who planted that tree there. They rush to the concourse, and there they see a man named Gus Mancuso standing near the tree. The two explain the whole situation to the chief. Mancuso takes them to the bridge and discovers that there is something wrong with the ship. When they are there, a robot almost falls on Mancuso's head, and the two tell him that malfunctions have been happening on the ship for a long time. Gus also takes a look at Aurora's pod and figures out the truth, saying that what Jim did was not right. They discover multiple cascading failures throughout the ship's systems, but the computer doesn't reveal their origins. If the faults are not repaired, the ship will inevitably fail, causing the passengers and crew to perish. Gus attempts repairs with Jim and Aurora's help, but having generally felt unwell since waking, he falls critically ill. Aurora finds herself unable to sleep at night, so she decides to go for a swim. Suddenly, she starts drowning as there's a problem with the gravity on the ship. She starts drowning, however, the gravity drive resets just in time, allowing her to make it out of there alive just in time. After that, the three of them get together on the bridge and try to figure out what has been going on with the ship. Gus figures out that something happened two years ago, taking on a major system. Gus starts feeling sickly and is being taken to the infirmary by Aurora and Jim. The ship's automated medical suite, the auto doc, reveals that Gus has suffered a pan-systemic necrosis and that he only has hours to live, which Gus realizes was caused by multiple failures of his hibernation pod. The three of them are in the observatory when Gus gives Jim his ID bracelet and asks him to fix the ship. Suddenly, the lights change to red, alarming the danger, and the ship starts to shake. The two run, but there is another error in the gravity drive, and both of them start floating. The two barely make it to the engineering lab and start to look for the problem. 
They find it in the power plant, figuring out that the computer module administering the ship's fusion reactor power plant has been critically damaged, causing the cascading malfunctions as the other system's computing power is diverted to try and maintain it. They replace the damaged module, but when the computer attempts to vent the reactor to extinguish a runaway plasma reaction, the exterior vent fails. Jim then figures out that he needs to open the vent door from outside in order to cool down the reactor. The two go to the airlock, and as he gets into the spacesuit, he gives the bracelet given to him by Gus to Aurora, considering that he might never come back. As Jim is walking out of the airlock, Aurora tells him to come back, saying she cannot live without him on this ship. As Jim goes out, Aurora goes back to the reactor and sees that the temperature is really high. Jim gets closer to the vent from outside. The temperature rises in the reactor room while he tries to bypass the vent door to open it. Jim realizes that he will have to manually hold the door open so the reactor can vent and he tells Aurora. She asks him not to do it, but he has no other choice, saying this is the only way to save the people on the ship. She finally vents the reactor, and as she does so, Jim is blasted out into space as his tether snaps and his damaged spacesuit begins losing oxygen. Aurora puts on a spacesuit and retrieves a clinically dead Jim from space and manages to resuscitate him in the auto dock while the Avalon, its reactor repaired, returns to normal operations. The two then arrange a proper funeral for Gus. Jim learns that with Gus's clearance, the auto dock can function as a hibernation pod for one person and offers to put Aurora back in hibernation for the remainder of the voyage. However, Aurora decides otherwise. Jim proposes to her and the two live together. 88 years later, the ship's crew is awakened on schedule shortly before their arrival at Homestead 2. In the ship's grand concourse, they discover a huge tree with trailing vines, lush vegetation, flying birds, and a cabin. We can hear Aurora reading her story, describing the wonderful life she and Jim had together on the Avalon. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.